Hello friends, I'm Mike. I'm the wild child behind Audio Architects. For those of you who are already subscribed, it's good to see you back for more. You guys are just gluttons for punishment. If you're a first timer and you're into speakers, amplifiers, subwoofers, headphones, pretty much all things audio, techie type stuff, you're in the right place. So it would be cool if you stuck around for a bit because I will show you everything you'll ever wanna know before buying the Wharfdale Lintons. Stay tuned. You know, there's much to be desired from firing up an old vintage sound system from like the 1960s or 70s, enjoying a glass of your favorite beverage, sitting back in your beloved listening chair, and allowing the music to take you to another world, another different dimension. You know, sounds amazing, right? I think so. You know, the, the warmth of a classic amplifier, your turntable spinning, your favorite record, and filling the room with incredible sound through the diaphragm of the driver of your choice loudspeakers. I just painted such a beautiful picture for you there. You want that back, don't you? Who wouldn't? That was the golden age of audio. However, companies are starting to realize that a massive opportunity for consumer thirsty for nostalgia exists. The 70s kids who grew up around this incredible hi-fi eat this stuff up. For the younger generations, it's a matter of the coolness factor, you know, everything old is new to them and the mo they, you know, most of them deem the vintage market as a cool fad to be involved in. I mean, look at the vinyl resurgence, you know, just the other day I saw a couple of teenagers sifting through a box of vinyl at the local record shop. I mean, we're all aware that if something is cool, companies will jump at the chance to capitalize on the movement financially. Makes sense, nothing wrong with that. Several manufacturers have adopted vintage aesthetics for their loudspeakers like JBL, LTAC, KLH, Tenoy, and Wharfdale. What I think is cool about what Wharfdale has done here is they've reimagined a legacy design which is a nod to a unique heritage of the past and the genuine and humble beginnings of an audio company that would definitely last a test of time. The original Linton has been around since its first launch in 1965. I believe you get the best of both worlds with this massive stand mount speaker. All the strengths of a beautifully crafted classic British made loudspeaker and the integration of today's advancements in speaker and component technology and engineering. So you're, it's a win-win. The Wharfdale Linton is an intriguing three-way loudspeaker featuring a Kevlar woven eight inch bass driver, a five and a quarter inch mid-range driver, and a one inch soft dome tweeter. The drivers were designed exclusively for this speaker line, so that, that way you're not gonna see them on any other Wharfdale speakers, which I think is very cool because I love exclusive. The rear panel features two large bass ports, and when I say large, they're, they're big and a pair of nice looking binding posts. The enclosure is constructed from a medium density fiberboard chipboard sandwich cabinet. Wharfdale claims you get a cleaner sound from the speakers with this type of enclosure. It's a bit hollow sounding, not as solid as heavier MDF would have been, but that's being nitpicky at this point because it does weigh 40 pounds. So it's not like it's flimsy or lightweight or anything. And you get real wood veneer. That, not, that, that is not vinyl you see on those speakers right there. So you have the choice of color. You can get the black, which you see here with me, or red mahogany or a walnut. You could consider this next part a bit of aesthetic and sound kind of critique, but Peter Combo, uh, design this enclosure to work best with the grills on. I don't particularly like this practice since I love seeing the drivers flex when I play my music nice and loud. However, these are a, a nice pair of grills with the Wharfdale branding. They're a bit tough to take off. However, I only take them off for behind the scenes pictures for you guys for Instagram because the speaker is meant to have them on sonically. I can imagine the reasoning behind the grills needing to be on has to do with the lip around the front of the enclosure causing a bit of diffraction from the sound reflecting off the sides. So what the grill does is it's cut so that you get a better frequency response and overall dispersion. Okay, let's talk money for a second because I know you guys are probably wondering. 
money. What's going on? At this very moment in time, February 23rd, 2022 at 10 p.m., these speakers are $17.99 on Crutchfield. Links down below. And that includes the cool stands that fit your vinyl underneath, which I think is brilliant. You can't buy the speaker without the stands, period. You gotta have these stands with the speaker. So before we dive into sound, I wanna share with you what is being hooked up to these speakers so you can kind of feel out my point of reference. I will be streaming from Quobas using the Cambridge Evo 150 to stream and amplify. Impedance on these speakers is rated at six ohms, so I felt that the Evo 150 could handle the load just fine. On the analog side, I am playing my precious vinyl records through the U-turn, I know it's weird to hear that me say that, through the U-turn orbit and trying out the Evo 150's Phono preamp. I'm using speaker cables from World's Best Cables, the Megami version, which compared to other cables, I felt accentuated the bass just a smidge, so that's why I like using them. So, how did it sound? That's the uh, enigma. Well, this is a speaker that made me smile upon the first listen. I love a smooth V-curve when I listen to music, and I felt like the Lintons provided an abnormally deep bass response that I absolutely loved. They demonstrated detailed mids without sounding tinny and loud. Some speakers have a very pronounced mid-range that can fatigue the listener rather quickly. These were the total opposite, they were very pleasant. The warmth of the tweeters was extremely pleasing. In my opinion, they voiced these speakers more so for modern music, which tends to be mixed somewhat louder than older recordings. So I was satisfied after my first listening session, especially with the bass. I'm a huge proponent of using a subwoofer with almost every application. And when I played these, I didn't feel the need to plug in the, my subwoofer back in. Like I was really happy with a bass response. So now they aren't as intense as the KLH Model 5s. I'm sure you guys were, that was a question you guys were probably wondering, which I felt they had a bit more mid-range clarity, probably because, you know, build size and how they're engineered. However, the Model 5s weren't necessarily as smooth as the Lintons in the top end and surprisingly not as aggressive in the low end, which really astonished me because uh, especially because the Model 5s have a 10-inch driver, but perhaps that's the magic of positioning a ported speaker correctly. However, the Model 5s did have a more natural sound that you can tweak with attenuation, uh, the attenuation knob, so if you're into that kind of stuff. But I felt the Lintons were instinctively voiced in my favor, along with the beautiful tonality, the imaging, and overall soundstage were very decent. I felt they sounded a bit better towed in, a little bit, providing more of an immersive experience. Um, I've been trying all sorts of genres with these speakers, but I have to say these speakers, for some reason or another, love electronic music. I fed it all sorts of different options, guys, but the groups it seemed to like the most were, you know, people like Pendulum, Glitch Mob, Dead Mouse. Um, those are the ones that really stood out. But uh, on the vinyl side of things, I played the Social Network soundtrack from beginning to end, which is scored by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Um, and the Phono preamp included in the Evo 150 did just as well, maybe if not better, than U-Turn's Pluto preamp. So that was really cool. So let's go ahead and see if the REW measurements pair with my evaluative listening. So these measurements were identical, identical to what I thought they would have been. Heavy on the low end, mild on the mid range, and nice and mellow on the top end. The low end begins to waterfall at around 39 dB because as you know, this is a ported design and that's just what ported speakers like to do. They like to waterfall. So overall, I would say this is a very decent REW measurement, especially how wild it gets with the low end that low end spike. I always like it when the science backs up my ears. It's, it's really cool. But um, getting away from all the audio nerd techs and specs and all that stuff, I wanna introduce you to a fellow YouTuber and buddy of mine, Adam, from the Restless Outdoors YouTube channel, who owns a pair of these magical speakers. So here are his thoughts on the Wharfdale Lintons. Stay tuned. The Wharfdale Linton Heritage Speakers. Why did I buy these speakers? I mean, look at them, <laughs> they look amazing. When I brought these home about two years ago, I was just thoroughly impressed with the fit and finish of these speakers. I did get the uh, matching speaker stands. 
uh, and I did get it in walnut color. Uh, to me, it's just a, uh, just a classy look. But when it comes to sound, these bookshelf speakers, now, albeit they are on the larger side of bookshelf speakers, but with larger and big bookshelf speakers come big, big sound. And after two years, let me tell you, these speakers are very worn in and they just sound amazing. I don't care what kind of music you listen to, what genre of music to, these Lintons make anything sound just exquisite. You don't even need to subwoofer with these speakers. Let it break in after a few months, let those Kevlar speakers stretch out and you'll be amazed at what sound comes out of these. Now pushing these Lintons, I have an assortment of shit gear, uh, the Viator, the Saga Plus, and the great thing about these speakers, you don't really need high-end stuff to drive these speakers. Uh, I've actually uh, ran a SMSL DA9 to this thing and they still shine. All in all, if you're looking for an amazing speaker at a great price, you cannot pass up the Lintons. I mean, look at them, they just look cool. And over time, they just get better and better with age. The sound that comes out of these Lintons are just, again, exquisite. So there's a look at my setup and my very, very beautiful Wharfdale Linton Heritage speakers. So overall, these speakers were awe-inspiring. They performed far beyond expectations, and of course, it's an entirely subjective opinion. However, I feel the measurements backed up my views quite well. So, hey, look. This speaker may not be for you if you don't like bass and clean mids and pleasant, beautiful highs. If that's not your jam, I am sure there's a manufacturer out there that has made a bland, boring, and neutral speaker for you to indulge your senses. However, I feel the Wharfdale Lintons look great, sound great, and overall feel great to display within my system. I would confidently say that if you purchase these speakers, you won't be disappointed. You'll probably send me an email thanking me for pushing you over the edge to buy these speakers in the first place. Thank you all for joining me. If you're already subscribed, thank you. I do have a Patreon you can join as well to help support the channel. If you are new to the channel and you like it so far, I encourage you to check out you know some of my other videos to see if my channel is the right fit for you. And I would love for you to end up subscribing and joining me on my journey in hi-fi. Thank you again for spending some time with me and take care and I will see you guys next time.